Alright, what's up guys? CV Sukiyomi here. So hello, and today I'm going to show you my Sukiyomi Oracle Think Tank Tech. I've been playing around with for a week. Uh, I finally got it to a point that I'm really comfortable using it. So, um, first off, big shout out to RPG Caster. Um, because really, like, what, sold, what set me on playing this deck and making it my favorite clan is him. Because I got to see the deck and um, I was like, I fell in love with it after I saw Sukiyomi. And then after I watched the anime... Um, just even more love for the deck. So, uh, really big shout out. Good thanks to him. Another reason why I also play the deck is because there's a lot of Asian culture behind it, specifically Japanese culture. So if you guys ever get time, go take a look. Like type in Google or something. Type in Sukiyomi Amaterasu Japanese culture, and you guys can find lots of cool um history behind it. So, uh, yeah. So that's why I really really like it because it's a it has a lot of uh, Asian culture behind it really which is like really nice because you don't see too much of that but I'm really happy to see it so in this in especially in this deck because I like it so much so um another thing before we get on with the deck I double sleeve the deck for you guys oh no I double sleeve the deck for you guys so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test to see if this full moon goddess Tsukiyomi deck box can uh fit it inside and if it can cool if it can't uh I don't know what to tell you but I think it should. The first time I tried it, it fit. So, cool. See? There you go. And there you go. It's really nice. It's really snug. So, like, it, like, it's, I think it's meant to fit a double deck box anyways. So that's really, really nice. So, if you guys were kind of questioning whether this would fit your deck, probably will. So, Bushiro did a good job making a deck box that looks like it can't fit a double sleeve deck to actually making it fit a double sleeve deck, so, cool, so good for them, so cool beans, anyways, now we'll get on to the deck, now, um, I'll just go through it really quick, or I'll try to explain as much as I can, but I'll have to do a separate, a second video, like an explanation video, because there's a lot to explain in the deck, like you, like you can't just talk here for 10 minutes and then really understand the deck, so if you guys want to see like an explanation video, let me know. So, without further ado, we play four Sukiyomi. I play four because I want to increase my chance with opening it as well as um, getting it with the ride chain. So basically, if I play four, I open up with one, good. I still have three inside the deck that I can use to get the plus one with the ride chain, which is nice. That's why I really, really like four. And four has been testing out really good for me, so can't complain. All right, so next is grade threes. One proxy in here, so I play three CEO. Ignore Coco, it's actually another CEO. So I play three CEOs. CEO is a really good alternative Vanguard because, um, well, not only an alternative Vanguard, but a good game pusher too because um, she can hit big. She actually can help you get to the stack, but um, like it's kind of like through my testing, it's kind of weird when you, uh, once you get, once you get through your first stack and your opponent lives, there's generally two or three cards left inside that stack. And like, you have to like basically guard all your next attacks, which is possible, which is which is fine, right? But like, let's say, like because then if there's two cards left, um, you have to draw it and then soul charge, and then you have to look at top and leave it on the top because it's probably another trigger. So you kind of have to like guard kind of funny, which I'll get into later. But I mean, it's fine. She's still really good. I love her. I love both of them. So yeah. So anyways, good cards. Um. I didn't explain Tsukiyomi. Her skill is you can counter blast two, and if you have six or more soul, you counter blast two and draw two cards and then put one into the soul. So that's really good. And if you're missing any of the pieces, she loses minus 2,000, but her second skill gives you a chance to get those into the soul if you missed it. So pretty nice. Uh, next, grade two is we're playing four Half Moon Goddess Tsukiyomi. Very, very crucial. You really, really need this. Um, the reason why you need it is because you really, really need to ride this. If you don't ride this... Um, this is kind of dead, kind of dead. I mean, you basically have to go for broke, but if you put it in there, you ensure the sixth soul, and then you can start comboing, so it's very important. Because her skill is, um, you can soul charge two if you have Godhawk and Crescent Moon inside the soul. So really nice. Next, I play three Silent Tom. I've liked three Tom. I've tried four, but three is probably my favorite number. The reason why I like three is because in the late game, it's it's where it shines the most in the late game like in early game it's okay but your opponent's just gonna pick it off 
So in the late game, this card becomes very crucial. So that's why I really like to play three. Uh, next, I play four Oracle Guardian Red Eye. The reason why I play four Red Eye is because in case your Rai Train screws up, um, you you have a chance with Red Eye to shove the missing pieces into your soul, as well as getting one card closer to the stack. So it's really nice. It's you it's it has to attack, and the attack has to go through for it to soul charge one. But that's really not a big deal because um, what I like about it is it's not Vanguard related, so you can hit anything, which is nice. So yep, really good. Uh huh. Anyways, let's go on to the grade ones. Okay, next I'm playing four chocolate. Really, really good because you do draw a lot in this deck because OTT is kind of like hand advantage. Um, and what's really nice about it is if I play like the four Sukiyomi and the, like, the three CEO, I have cards to ditch with it, so it's crucial to play four. Um, really, really good. I like four. Um, it's been testing out really good for me. I don't find it clogging my hand. I've never had that issue, so... Yeah. Next, I play four Crescent Moon Goddess Tsukiyomi, which is very crucial. Um, works really well. It's a 7k booster, which is very, very good with all your grade twos, like Tom, for example. So really good. Next, I play four Gemini. Another really good 8k beater. It's also MVP with Silent Tom. So Silent Tom, guys, which is very important because Silent, if Silent Tom can get to the 15-16 mark, which it should in this deck because I play a lot of 7 and 8s, it's going to win you games. It's because it's just so good. With Silent Tom, they can't guard with grade zeros, and you're basically like in the clear. Next, I play 2 Blue Eye. Blue Eye is going to help you cycle through the stack. Now, a lot of people have been saying you should play Coca or you should play mainly Coca because some people are arguing between Coca and this card, and... I don't really care which one you play. I personally like Blue Eye because with Blue Eye, um, it helps me get to that stack quicker, and I really like that. A lot of people will tell you Coca look good on the stack too. Uh, Coca helps you with the stack too, and that's true, it does. But it doesn't do it consistently every turn, which is something I don't really like with it. So, I mean, it's it's purely up to you on which one you'd rather run. I tested out Coca, and it works fine. It, it's fine. But I like Blue Eye better because Blue Eye has just been helping me get to that stack and cycling through a little bit quicker. And I never put it, I usually only put it behind the Tsukiyomi. And in terms of power, Koka and Tsukiyomi, or Koka and Blue Eye behind Tsukiyomi hits for the same number, so it doesn't matter. Um, there's no difference between 16 and 17 in this game right now. Uh, next, I play One Tech Circle Magus because it's super cute and, I want, and I'm cool like that. So. Um, it's a 7k, that's really why I play it, but its skill is when it's called, um, when these, when this unit's called, you can look at the top card and leave it there. Like, it's kind of, that's really not that great to a lot of people, and, but I really just play it for 7. Like, that's it. 7's nice to have. And, for a lot of you guys who, um, if you guys are forgetful, like me, Circle Magus actually can help you, um, remember if you, remember where the stack is. Like, let's say it's like a... You, you call it, you look at the top card, and it's a trigger, and you're like, okay, so I'm at the stack. I know for sure I'm at the stack. So that's that's something nice about it. So, um, yeah. I mean, but I really just play for 7. That other thing I just said is really situational. So, mainly for 7. Really nice. And it's super cute. So, Circle Magus is super cute. <sighs> yeah. Cool stuff. Next, I play Godhawk Ichibyoshi, because... With Godhawk Ichibyoshi, you can look at top 5 to go for this. And then with the top 5, you can go into look for this. And then with this in Soul, you Soul Charge 2. And then, so just pretend Soul Charge 2. Right? Yeah, Soul Charge 2. One second. Okay, Soul Charge 2. Then you look at top five for this, and then you're good. So cool stuff. Ride chain stuff right there. So really, really nice. Godhawk Ichibyoshi. Starring Vanguard. Next, I play four heal, four draw, eight critical. So, yep. Um, I really like this. I like the crits because the crits are... 
really really good especially like in late game when you're trying to hit when you're hitting for your stack it just gets really really aggressive and like your opponent really can't deal so it's really good like I really like that so yeah not much else I can say there if you go six and six like six crit six draw that works too whatever um, you like but you know I just personally like eight crit four draw four heal so that's the deck um, oh one quick thing I want to explain if I explain it in a video, it's this one. So a lot of you guys are kind of questioning, like, ride chains are really, like, cons consistent. Like, you have to open up with it. Now, the one thing that I like about this ride chain that separates it from every other ride chain is that you don't have to open up with it. You can still look at the top five cards, and if you don't get it, you know, fine. At least you can still ride one. But if you don't have one, you still can look through the top five and get that chance of riding it, which is better than a lot of the other, um which it gives you a better chance than a lot of the other ride chains do. So that's why I like it. It's a more consistent ride chain. Don't get me wrong. I mean, ride chains are with are um, inconsistent in general. But with this deck, I mean, it's a little bit more consistent. And if the ride chain doesn't go into your favor, you still have CEO, which is um, amazing. So, yeah. So that's my deck, guys. I uh, hope you guys liked it. Comment down below. Um... Like the video, I guess, whatever floats your boat, and expect another video coming up after this explaining how to use the deck and how it works. So, thank you guys, peace out.